Hey neighbors, the Handyman here with Initiative Coffee Company, along with stretchy powered cartoon dog and rain rainicorn enthusiast Jake Del Maro. And today we're talking about DDAL 311, The Quest for Sportum, writer Robert El Ducci, editors Claire Hoffman, Chris Dulatch, and Travis Woodall. This is a two hour mod set for tier two play, optimized for five eighth level characters. The adventure kicks off in the Underdark, where our heroes have been venturing for days. Parties in search of a way to prevent madness that plagues the surface. They'll encounter a corrupted myconid infested by Zuktmoy, and they'll have to make tough decisions to find allies in the dark. Part one, Spordome. The party starts in the middle of the Underdark, where they must contend with terrain hazards that look more dangerous than they are. If the party mistakes the gas spores for beholder stocks, an explosion could start them off at a disadvantage. After dealing with the spores, the party f finds a lead, a dead Darrow, with a cryptic journal. The party can use the journal to track back to the Darrow camp, where they'll contend with powerful fiends. Get us going here, Jake. I love... I love gas spore fungi. <laughs> they are the most... One of the most troll things that exist in they the sure are. Like... If they die, if one if somebody gets infected by the spores, which is still like a DC 10 save or, or, or whatever, like the character dies after a number of plus 1d12 plus their con mod in hours, they just die, mm -hmm. which I absolutely adore as a as as a DM because it's like you got players at your table, if they're not all brand new, they're just like ah oh, crap, like yeah. and it's it's awesome. Um, other than that. I, I really don't think there's too much. Like, there, I, I the one thing I do like about this mod and the follow-up mods is that they're actually really straightforward. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like there's any parts yeah. of time where like there's really anything that goes, oh, don't do that. It's a two-hour mod, mm -hmm. and you know, moving forward in this, it's like, you know, realistically, if you're holding to the mod as is, you you should be fine. Uh, if you're like once again two hour slot, I I'm not I don't want to cut anything like that. I don't either. And frankly, I think this mod is easy to prep to. Exactly. All of the sections are very straightforward. All yeah. of the sections are like do this. Do this. They're pretty bare bones. Um, there's not a lot of like complicated like combination of things to be done. It's a really kind of like, especially if this is maybe like your first tier two mod, it's a good one to, to, to dip your, your toe in the water of tier two. Yep. Um, again, I don't think that there's a ton to say about this first section because it's all pretty straightforward. Like all of section one is gas, gas fungi, gas spore fungi and the Darrow camp Arrow. where you fight yeah. some Bulgaras. It's a tough fight uh, for a low level tier two party. Um, but, well, we've already I done mean, now at least point like three other tier two mods or four other tier two mods now. I mean, if you're if you're doing them in the order that that they're presented, for sure, yeah. So I don't think uh, I don't think it's too challenging. I think the um, it's the nicely well. I'll say it's well still built. compared to other mods. Mm -hmm. Once again, I'll I'll. I will highlight this. This is well put together, mm -hmm. at least part one, and then you know part two, part three are actually as well very well put together. So, do I do like how the cohesiveness of this story. Yeah, I think that's pretty common of Aducci's work, right? Like uh, any of the mods that I've gone through that he's written have been very straightforward, easy to run. They're not super complicated. Um, There's not a weird underlying like this is what you got to do. It's like right. this is the mod. There's not some weird trick. Go do or it. Anything. Yeah. Yeah. So. Anyway, part two, Agraricus's colony. After further delving in through the fungal jungle, the party arrives at Spordome and finds rivalry between the denizens and other myconids under the leadership of the nefarious Sacred Seer. The myconids of Spordome might aid the surface folk in their efforts against the giants of Miramidra if the party returns the sprouts from the Sacred Seer. Um, sprouts are like little baby, kid, child myconids. Yeah. All right, that's cute. He did a thing there. I'm behind it. It's always better to do a thing than not do a thing. Um, honestly, I'm not. Let's get. I'm very much. It's there is a your your task from Eric has to pretty much deal with the sacred seer in mm -hmm. um, the dome, and you know, once again, really straightforward. Um, there is cause, I guess, for like this. They're not not necessarily believing 
it's anything the sacred seer says because mm-hmm. like they're like identified as a bad person and like i guess <clears throat> it's it's kind of interesting in the micanid like colonies in my opinion it's kind of like they're just big lumbering things and like to me it, it doesn't mean that they're not nefarious but like i think it's just funny thinking of like a like a nefarious big mushroom stock it's like huh, 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 right huh. yeah like <laughs> but like you know it's it's the sacred seer is not necessarily a good person mm-hmm. and like it, it's true to the core like i was, I was trying to make some sort of mushroom pun but i didn't have it um but true to the spore i don't know yeah i don't um, know there we go um yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, walk, we'll, 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 we'll high five and walk away on that <laughs> one um but like learning more about the sacred seer is just like she can like she believes that she's i don't she's not even telling lies she believes that she can do the right. thing like she's yeah. like i i am the the, the bomb.com sure i don't know and and presumably the idea is she knows where these uh where these things called brain cap mushrooms are brain cap mushrooms are the things that can prevent the madness on the surface before it takes root instead of kind of being uh retroactive about it um it all ties in pretty well. Um, but yeah, I think, again, like... Straightforward. There's not a lot of room for kind of wishy-washy content in a two-hour mod, right? Like, no. you kind of have to cut it down to bare bones. There are a lot of bullets in this section that can be intimidating if you don't just sit and read them and, like, oh, it's what, not that hard. What I used to do in terms of... I wish I had all my highlighters here. Um when i'm prepping these mods is i typically try to separate it in terms of what's important for like you know like uh, maybe combat what's important for lore what's important Mm -hmm. for the story and i think that might be something if you are printing these out and are you know maybe editing them on you know some sort of uh, software Mm -hmm. just do that for yourself or make make a key Mm -hmm. and that could be an easy way of being like oh you know this might be just too much info. Like yeah. you could sit there and like, these are supposed to be cohesive, like conversations and dialogues. But a lot of time with adventures league, you'll have situations of they'll just ramble mm-hmm. because it's hard to like, you, you can't, can't guarantee that your players are going to be interested in like participating or, in the dialogue. And they also don't know. Sure. Like they don't know the right questions to ask unless they play the mod, which then like stop reading the mod. Yeah, I mean, that's part of the the issue for sure, you know. Um, And I think, like, for us, we have so many people in our group that have played so many mods that, like, at this point, it's tough for them to remember what goes on in what mod because they've played so many of them, you know what I mean? Like, it's hard for me, like, doing these videos. (laughs) (laughs) They start start blending together. That's why, you know, that's why, dear viewer, these have been done minutes (laughs) apart. Right. Yeah, it's definitely right we, after the module. We just, and not we just, six we just months refresh. After we ran it. We just uh, refresh and turn up, put on new shirts and then, right. you know, new hairdos and stuff. Yeah. Or switch the locations where we're, where, you know, where we're at. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's just elaborate green, st- green screen. Yeah, my backgrounds. other room is over there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, I think this section, again, is pretty straightforward. It's just a conversation section, an RP section. It gives the players some time to, like, flex those muscles. I wouldn't spend more than, I guess, if your players are really you interested spend, in it, you can spend a half hour here, forty yeah, minutes. Yeah, you can spend maybe. as much time as you want yeah. in these RP sections because, like, it does highlight that the Mycanids are kind of good people, typically. Yeah. Um, and like once again, that that contrast of what the Underdark is, it's like hunt or be hunted, mm-hmm. kind of thing. And then you got the Mycanids, and then like you know a few other choice races uh, or creatures, but like. It should speak to the fact that, like, Agaricus, in particular, is not here to get you. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, like, an allied organization of people in the Underdark. You know, like, often the Underdark is criticized as being just a place where things want to kill you. Um, <clears throat> it's one little reprieve from that. Agreed. Um, I don't know. I think uh, it's a pretty good section myself. Agreed. But... Moving on, part three, Doom Spore Dell. When the party parlays with the Sacred Seer, they're faced with a choice. Side with the fungal families of Spore Dome or the Sacred Seer and her rotten lot. 
After negotiating with the Seer, they will have a stiff battle with Formians. Um, again, straightforward, not a lot of like points to hit on. Uh, the Formian battle is tough. It's two giants that can turn you into giants. Um, I don't know. Uh, the Seer is not particularly interested in like fighting to the death if you don't want to side with her. She knows. She's like, all right. She's like, all right, I know that I'm better than you, so peace. I also have my other ten Mycanid sovereigns, or, you know, my other ten people, adults, just right here. Like, yeah. you're not going to take me away. Right, like, yeah, like, you're not, yeah. She, she's like, <clears throat> you in what army? Yeah. So, like, it, it's kind of, I don't know. It, there's been a couple of these mods where it's like, I think the last couple, it was when we went to the... Duragar City too, and it mm -hmm. was like the person thought she was Deep Duera as well. Yeah. And it's like there's a lot of like just air of just arrogance in these mods at times. I think like part of that is the theme of the season, right? Like this notion of madness and this notion of like um Oh, there's nothing wrong with it. I just think it's right. really funny. It's, how, just like, a all repeated, of like, it's a repeated trope, which is It's still um, fine because it's like yeah. it's like different people just saying that you're worthless. Right. Like <laughs> And I don't mind it. And then the Fomorian fight, I mean, like, that could be a little rough. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, um, it, they're, they're, they're tanky and, like, they can do a lot of damage. And, ugh, yikes. Yeah, it's bad news. It's not super great. Um, they can, like, turn your party into Fomorians, like... And, if, and of course, it's not gonna like it, it doesn't expressly say that, but like that's what Fomorians do. But you know, in terms of abilities, they they can mess you up pretty bad. Um, yeah, and they're not, and it's charisma saves too. Like yeah, I mean that's the big thing, right? It's <coughs> like it's a save that most classes put into their dump, put in as their dump stat. Yeah, unless you've um, got an already proficient save, or you have a paladin, it's it could be a very tough roll. Yeah. But otherwise, I think that this was a pretty straightforward mod. I enjoyed it, running it. It was fun. Um, I'm not gonna write home. I'm not gonna write home to mom about it. But like, mm -hmm. it's not also like what I'm gonna write home to mom about and say that this is an awful mod. I mean, it's it's very functional and it does the job. And if you're looking for two hours to fill, um, it's a good like go to. I, think I don't think I would cut good. this mod out of the series though. Either way, I, I, I wouldn't either. Like, I think this. I is think important. this is. I think this is a good mod to have because later on when people when we get to look for um allies mm -hmm. myconids are clearly there and right. you know that can help you know alleviate some of the other headache that is the tier three versions of the, all these mods or not tier three versions the tier three situations that these mods get lead up to mm -hmm. so that's just me by bargain or brutality the party can obtain brain caps the hopeful solution to the madness uh, the surface bears before the corruption sets in. Parties also gain allies, either the Seer's followers or the denizens of Spordom. So there it is, DDAL 3 11, the quest for Spordom. Thank you so much for listening to some advice on how to streamline and run it to your tables. Be a good neighbor, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Hold the Dead for notifications. Join us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Patreon. And from now, until the next time, roll together.